This video was brought to you by Brilliant, and the first 200 people to use the link below will get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Very, very few leaders have ever come close to having the title ruler for life associated with them, let alone applied to them. But one leader that actually has is the current president of China, Xi Jinping. With his second term set to expire just next year, and his term as the Chinese Communist Party's General Secretary set to officially end later this year, talk is already turning to whether Xi really will be a ruler for life, or whether calling for Xi forever might just have been a fanciful endeavour. Before we get into it properly, we're rapidly approaching 300,000 subscribers on this channel. So if you want more news at this important time, then be sure to subscribe. And it really helps us out too, so thank you. Before we get onto why Xi might actually end up following through on the title of ruler for life, we first need to establish how he got that title in the first place. Since 1982, and until very recently, the title of ruler for life was constitutionally impossible in China. Under Article 79 of the Constitution of the People's Republic of China, the term of office for the President and Vice President of the People's Republic of China is the same as that of the National People's Assembly, and they shall serve for no more than two consecutive terms. As Xi Jinping first took office in March of 2013, this would mean him hitting his consecutive term limit in March of 2023 at the age of 69. So not exactly a ruler for life. Crucially though, this term limit hasn't stopped Xi because he got rid of it. In 2018, the National People's Congress, China's parliament, approved a constitutional amendment to, you guessed it, remove term limits, immediately signaling to everyone that Xi wants to rule for much longer than the previously prescribed two-term limit. But just because the constitutional says you can rule for life doesn't mean you become discussed as one. The British constitution, for instance, has no restriction on consecutive terms as prime minister. But even Margaret Thatcher or Tony Blair, both prime ministers who served for multiple terms, never garnered the title of ruler for life. Because, well, ruler for life implies that there's no credible opposition, which was clearly never the case in the UK. But in China, Xi and the CCP have all but ensured that. That's because, ever since becoming president, Xi Jinping has consolidated his power on a level equivalent to that of the CCP's founder, Chairman Mao. Xi has orchestrated an immense fight back against corruption, punishing in excess of a million of his own party members at both high and low levels within the party. Xi has also overseen a vast increase in the state's apparatus when it comes to surveillance and censorship. This broad fight back has, according to critics, given Xi the added benefit of having a vehicle to make his own political rivals and critics of his regime just, well, disappear. In fact, it goes further because Xi has subverted the ordinary party president relationship. Rather than Xi serving his party, it's his party that serves Xi. The constitutional amendment that removed term limits, for instance, was widely just seen as a rubber stamping exercise, something that's reflected in the voting records. Of the 2,964 votes cast, just two people voted against the amendment, and only three abstained, i.e. the amendment was supported by 99.8% of Congress. And at the time of the vote, there wasn't even another credible candidate to replace Xi, so the Congress was effectively just giving him this power. Xi's apparent stranglehold over his party and his country is further apparent in the light of Xi's personal political philosophy, known as Xi Jinping thought, which has been ratified into the constitution itself, an honour that's only previously been reserved for two other people including Chairman Mao. And in fact, the comparisons between Xi and Mao don't just stop at political philosophy. That's because when it comes to issues like surveillance and censorship, Xi has been called China's most authoritarian leader since Mao. And while the party may no longer reach into every corner of Chinese life, as it did in the 1970s, the apparatus of the state, and by extension Xi, does, arguably to a greater extent than ever before. 
Xi has also acquired or created several new titles for himself, adding to his normal titles of Head of State and Commander-in-Chief of the Military. Xi is also the leader of the Central Learning Group for Foreign Affairs, Taiwan Affairs, for comprehensively deepening reforms, for internet security, for national defense and military reform, and financial and economic affairs. And Xi has even effectively taken over control of the courts. Crucially, Xi has also had the title of core leader bestowed upon him, a title that doesn't really give him any additional powers, but is hugely symbolic, again putting him on the same level as Mao. All in all, this led Gary Locke, the former US ambassador to Beijing, to remark that Xi is at the center of everything in China. However, there is an issue for Xi, and that's because while all evidence points towards Xi ruling for at very least a third term, if not significantly longer, it's unlikely that he will indeed rule for life. That's because sooner or later, even the brightest stars fall. Look at Vladimir Putin and Russia. Following the Russian invasion of Ukraine and the backlash to it, talk of the end of Putin, be it through resignation or ejection, has significantly increased. And interestingly, that happened just under a year after Putin signed into law a presidential term reset that would have allowed him to rule until 2036, if not for life. That's not the only parallel either. Just like Putin, there's a growing problem for China that might end up scarring Xi's presidency, the economy. In recent months, China has faced, and in some cases is continuing to face, substantial economic issues. As we covered in another video, Evergrande, China's second largest property developer, seems to be on the brink of collapse. And were Evergrande to collapse, it's highly, highly likely that it will bring down other vital sectors of the Chinese economy with it, from construction and material firms through to financial institutions which lent money to Evergrande and in individual Evergrande buyers. All in all, this could potentially herald a major issue for Xi's government and the Chinese economy. And again, just like Russia, China also has a succession problem. That's because the longer Xi stays in power, the longer he consolidates his power and grip on the CCP and the country, the greater and greater the risk becomes of a bloody power struggle after his eventual demise, be it through death or politics. And actually, that's made even worse by the fact that unwritten rules about retirement ages are likely going to force at least 11 out of the 25 current members of the CCP's executive committee to resign, as well as two of the 11 on the standing committee the very, very top brass of the CCP. Such a turnover of experienced officials will require Xi to bring in fresh faces. Fresh faces who likely won't have the experience to take over a country like China come the end of Xi, further adding to the country's succession problem. Ultimately though, we just can't know how much longer Xi will stay in power for. What we do know is that the longer he maintains control and his grasp on the country, the harder it will be for the country's next president to continue pushing China into a prosperous future. Fortunately though, there is a way to ensure that you will have a prosperous future, and that's improving your skills over at Brilliant. Brilliant is an online STEM learning platform that turns complex subjects into fun and interactive experiences. I actually did a computer science degree, and I've loved exploring Brilliant to refresh my skills, as well as learning new ones to help with my current job, like their superb statistics courses. But you don't need any kind of background in STEM. If you just want to spend a bit of time building your skills, then you can do it right away, with no long boring lectures like the ones I had to sit through. Sorry to my former university. Instead, you can learn through interactive games and puzzles, the kind of thing you actually want to do. There's something at all levels too, with more advanced courses on things like neural networks and even quantum computing. Just pick a course that you're interested in and get started. They're all designed by award-winning instructors and built upon the principle of active learning, so you're gaining STEM knowledge by actually doing it. Brilliant helps you learn new things and sharpen your skills. So if you want to improve with STEM, then you should sign up to Brilliant at brilliant.org forward slash TLDR global. And the first 200 people to do so will get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thanks so much for supporting the channel.